Jason, thank you for joining us here this morning. You know, energy just seems like a sector that's been left behind when almost everything else has performed well, even over the last year. In general, before we drill down on specifics, what's your outlook for 2020 for the energy sector? Well, I think the first half of 2020 is going to continue to be fairly rough. Uh, the, the market is, uh, the oil market is oversupplied. Uh, we do see that correcting in the back half of the year. And so I do think that there uh, could be more favorable trading into the back half of the year. Uh, but we're certainly cautious and relatively defensive in the names that we choose uh, for 2020 in general, uh, Chevron being one of those. Does this have anything to do with sort of the rise and refocus on ESG trading where so many people are a little apprehensive about investing in a company that obviously focuses so much on fossil fuel production? I, it's certainly playing a role, uh, and I do cover both the U.S. and European stocks. I'd say for the European stocks, ESG is an even bigger issue. Uh, but I really think that what it comes down to is in the oil price environment that we've been in, the financial results just haven't been that great. So ESG can, if nothing else, be an excuse for not owning these stocks if they're not performing financially. And so when you're looking in the sector, and you said you are being relatively defensive, but there are some names that you like with some caution, what are some of those names? Well, Chevron would be top of the list. Uh, Chevron is a company that is generating very strong free cash flow. Uh, that free cash flow is being returned to shareholders. Uh, the uh, company just had a nice 8% plus increase in the dividend announced uh, this week. Uh, it's also returning cash in the forms of buybacks. Uh, we also like BP in Europe, uh, a company that's uh, we think at an inflection point uh, in terms of uh, getting the balance sheet into better shape and being able to return more cash to shareholders. What are your expectations then for some of these earnings prints that we are going to see if you think that potentially the beginning of 2020 could still be a little bit pressured for some of these names? Yeah, and of course we're looking back into the fourth quarter, which we know is a pretty tough quarter, in particular for refining and for chemicals. Uh, Exxon has more exposure to those two areas, so uh, we think it could be uh, a relatively tough quarter for Exxon. Uh, Chevron is not immune to that either. So we're not really looking at the look into 4Q as being fantastic. What's going to be more important, I think, is look forward for these companies, uh, being able to say that they continue to uh, lower their cost structure, continue to uh, be very disciplined in how they deploy capital, and continue to focus on getting more cash back to the shareholders. I think that's what's going to be important for the stocks uh, on the earnings calls today. We talk so much about the implication for oil prices and what it tells us or what it's suggesting about global growth. And I know you're focusing more on some of the equity names, but of course the underlying price of oil is important in considering all of this. The coronavirus outbreak has been a fear of the markets and has put pressure on the commodity part of this uh, sector. Are you at all worried about that and how it ends up flowing through to the equity names? Uh, yes, of course we are. And I, I think part of the issue is that even before we knew about the contagion, uh, there was concerns around demand and the market was oversupplied in the first half of the year. Now, I would say that uh, the potential uh, on demand is about 200,000 barrels a day or so uh, from the coronavirus. Uh, that is something that makes the market even looser. We are getting offsets. Uh, clearly, the output in Libya is at very low levels right now. Uh, but the market, I think, has been rightly focused on the fragility of demand recovery, and that just gets worse as, as a result of the coronavirus.